Hey, what's going on, working class hustlers? This is La Machine back with another episode of the Working Class Hustler podcast. And as always, I have my lovely co host, the lovely Miss Karen. But guess what? We got a surprise for you. We got a special guest in on this show. So you really want to make sure that you don't miss this. Together, we're going to be discussing how to be successful on Amazon. Specifically, we're going to be talking about how much inventory you need to have. That's a very, very important component to your success. So we're going to be talking about why. So make sure you stay tuned. And as a bonus, if you stick around, I'm actually going to reveal to you on this show how much I actually spent in inventory purchasing inventory last month. That way you also get as a bonus an idea of how much you want to, you're go, how much you're going to spend in order to do numbers similar to mine. And I'm going to be revealing what those numbers are. So without further ado, let me bring in my co-host, the lovely Miss Karen say hello. Hello. <laughs> and my main man, Frank. Yo, say what's up to the working class hustlers out there. <laughs> what's going on? How y'all doing? And also, doing? don't forget, uh, Frank is also, he has his own uh, channel, NBA Cooler Talk. If you guys are into sports, you don't want to miss that. Can you tell us just a little bit before we get into it? And to today's show, what 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 are you talking about on your uh, on your show? Just basketball news and like anything that's like real real popular in the urban culture, but mostly just basketball. You know, anything going on in the NBA, I probably did made a video about it. <laughs> All right, and and they can just look up that channel NBA Cooler Talk. Uh, I, I'll be checking that out myself. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so much for joining. And when you look at your three hosts today, you have to understand, we came together specifically like this to give the working class hustlers out there different perspectives. In other words, the three of us are on, we're, we're at different points in our journeys. You guys know if you follow the channel, I've been selling on Amazon since 2008. Uh, Karen, how long have you, when did you get started? I think in earnest, probably in 2020. Okay. Frank, when did you get started? Uh, probably like six months ago. Perfect. And another thing to keep in mind, hustlers, some of us come from other areas. In other words, we didn't just come on to the Amazon platform. We had experience. I know my two co-hosts today come from the eBay space. That's also important to keep in mind. They brought some of those skills and experiences over. And and would you guys would you guys say that kind of helped you out? You didn't feel like you were new to e-commerce itself. Definitely. Yeah, it definitely helped. it definitely helped. Mm -hmm. eBay mm -hmm. is um, you know a different platform altogether, but it definitely <laughs> is good sort of training ground, if you will, to help you understand about shipping costs and just you know the customer uh, relations. You customer definitely got to deal with it. Just getting a sense of of uh, you know whether you even like this kind of business. Uh, before having to deal with uh, Amazon and Amazon's rules, and you know, it's a it's a little bit more complicated on the uh, mm -hmm. Amazon platform. Frank, do you agree? Yeah, the Amazon is like it got way more rules and restrictions and a shorter like margin for error. Ah. You know, like mm. stuff that'll get your eBay, it might get your eBay listing took down and get your Amazon account took down. So, you know, that's something that you, you hopefully you don't, you know, get on Amazon and risk, you get too risky because, yeah, you can definitely lose your account and you're going to need a, a legal team to get an Amazon <laughs> account back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It, it feels like the difference between right. chess and checkers to me. Yeah. The difference Big time. Between, 
you know, it's different between basic math and and and, and, and long division or, or <laughs> physics. <laughs> I follow you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. let's get into um, you know, the real kind of gist of this. So, <clears throat> what we need you guys to understand is that collectively we've been talking about it. And what we know from our experiences, if you want to be successful on Amazon, and I'm just going to I'm just going to put it out there. For example, we just started the month of April. So when we look at March uh, now, I sell on two platforms primarily. Well, three, because I have my own website, but that does very little. But my two main ones are Amazon and Walmart. And collectively, I did $18,809.57. That's in revenue. That's not profit. But when you want numbers like that, and Karen is also a six-figure seller, uh, and then, of course, Frank comes. He's, he's a working-class hustler. He's been doing this. He came to the platform. Um, he, he's, do, he's making it happen. But what, we've, what we want to convey to you is the point that if you want success, if you want to see some real numbers, like five-figure a month type, you've got to have a lot of inventory and you we we must continue on that path it's not enough just to have a lot of inventory across a small amount of SKUs. you have to have a lot of inventory and you have to have a lot of SKUs. now i can tell you we just did a quick tally and i have roughly 200 active aces right now uh on amazon um and Karen, how many how many do you do you have right now? I have about three hundred active. Okay. Mm. Hey. Um <laughs> next time we're gonna go from large smallest to largest. <laughs> I got about twenty. You know, the newbie, I got I got about twenty, but I got twenty that's been they've been moving though. But yeah, okay. I got about twenty. Okay, but see, that's why we wanted you. That's why the hustlers need you, because we need that perspective too. Everybody starts somewhere. And honestly, you haven't been on the platform that long. You're actually doing pretty good. You said about 20 SKUs. Yeah. Okay. 20. I that's would say I, I didn't check on active, but literally no less than 50, at least 15 minimum, like maximum is active. Like, it's not that many unactive ones on there. Okay. Now, let me give my take on a, a big reason, uh, in my opinion, that you need to have a lot of SKUs. One of the major, uh, excuse me, one of the major things that I feel having a lot of SKUs, what it does for you, it allows you to, to take the blows that you're going to take in business. That's, that's just part of business. If you're a serious and legitimate business, there's going to be an ebb and flow. In other words, I'll give you an example. You could be selling this, this product right here for, for an example. And it could be doing well. And then all of a sudden, it's not doing well anymore. It just, all your sales, you might have been doing five, ten sales a day, for example. And then all of a sudden, it's not doing anything. And then you go try to find out why. And anything could happen. Maybe the manufacturer had you removed. Maybe the authorized distributor had you removed. Maybe there's a price war going on. And when you jumped on the listing, there were only five sellers. Now there's 15, 20 sellers, and there's a race to the bottom going on. That does not mean that you're done with this product. That means that you're done with this product for now. Karen can definitely attest to this. Whatever was selling and has stopped selling due to other seller activity, that will come back. But how long is it going to take? We don't know. So in the meantime, when this is a selling, if you don't have other SKUs, you're not going to be able to absorb those punches that you take. You're not going to be able to absorb the ebb and flow, the, the upticks and the slowdowns. And that's just part, uh, part and parcel of the business. Um, Karen, you want to you wanna, um, echo on that a little bit? Yeah, I'd say you're absolutely right. I mean, at any time, anything could happen to your listing. 
And I think one of the biggest mistakes that I hear, uh, you know, with sellers or relatively new sellers is the notion that, well, all right, I'm going to do my research and I've done my research and I found five items that I can list. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for them to sell and then I'll buy more items mm. that that is um, not that that's not going to get you off the ground. Not mm -hmm. at all. Uh, rather, it's more like you need to build a, a pipeline. You need to have something mm. that's going to be firing at all times. Because as you said, uh, Horace, there's just a normal ebb and flow. Uh, sometimes an item is hot, 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 and then it goes cold. You need other items to pick up the slack. And, you know, Frank, when, when, you, when you consider what we just said about having mm -hmm. a lot of SKUs that helps you because, you know, products are kind of, the volatility is there. If you got a good product, it could be up, it could be down. You as a new, as a relatively new seller with a, a, a limited amount of SKUs, are you seeing anything like that happening? Um. Not not with Amazon, I'm not. Okay. Because it's been too short of a time and I don't think like I think some of that can be seasonal and it really hasn't even been enough time for a real season change. So I really haven't seen an influx in sales like that. So not okay. yet. Not with Amazon at least, I would say. So have your sales been steady? So you have about twenty Listings. Yeah, they've been, they've been, yeah, they've been. And real, all and of them listed. have been pretty consistent. consistent. Yeah, they've been pretty, yeah, pretty consistent. Like, okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they've been kind of yeah, they keep going. I'll just um, I'll let you start talking about Amazon hold money, but Lord. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's that. <laughs> there, there is also that. Yes. But, yeah. but you know, just in all transparency. And to give that benefit to the hustlers out there that are watching, Frank, you're trying to get your numbers up. Mm -hmm. And so you've got consistent sales, but you don't have, you're not doing the the revenue that you'd like to be doing. Um, so possibly you getting more out there is eventually going to get you kind of to the numbers like you, like I'm getting, like Karen is getting. Um, you've got the consistency, but what, what would you, I don't know how much you want to share with the hustlers about how, what your numbers were like last month or anything like that. Uh, um, I got like, well, right now I got like, it's like 1100 just in Amazon that they, you know, they ain't giving me, they, they, <laughs> they got a lot, they got a lot of it in the reserve. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. <laughs> You, you know, you you, you kind of need something where, I, from what I'm looking at it as, as a new seller, you got to have some outside of Amazon money that you can put into Amazon until your money starts flowing. Oh, my God. Dude, were we just talking about that? This dude, that's what you, like, this, this dude that's what you going to need. Like, we were just gotta talking take, about that. Me and Karen were just talking about this. This dude is on it, yo. <laughs> yeah, because right. the turnaround, the tu you can't like freeze your business about. waiting on Amazon. So, oh my God. If you got a job, oh you're going to have to God. take $40, $50 a check. And you, even if you just put it to the side for product that you're selling, but you're going to have to funnel some money wow. into it until you start getting your money out. Okay. Like, it's, it's, okay. It's inevitable that you're gonna do that, <laughs> or you're gonna, you're gonna not, or your process to build your Amazon business is gonna be way slower than it had to be. I did not expect this conversation to go this way. Karen and I was were just talking about this, and the one thing I said, talk, it, we were actually comparing eBay to to Amazon. eBay is a flipping business. I I sell the product, I get the money, I move on. Amazon is a cash flow business. You have to manage the flow of cash through the business or you're not going to be successful. Number one, they're holding, they holding your money for two weeks. The payout only happens every two weeks, number one. 
Number two, when you do get paid out, there may, there will most likely be a reserve on your funds. So you're not even going to get all the money. The more you make, the larger the reserve. So, you know, it's not like they're really incentivizing you in the beginning to do more. But you know, of course, you're going to have to do more. You're going to have to weather that. But what Frank said that I, I really, this dude is like, he might as well have been in the conversation that we were having. You talk about working class hustlers. The whole reason for this, I work a regular job. And not and we, you know, I actually brought you up, Frank, in our conversation. I said, you know, Frank has a regular job. That way you got other money coming in. You have to have until you build up, uh, you're gonna have to have monies coming in. And I think that's where the disillusion with with uh, with Amazon comes because nobody's really telling you that you need to expect this. They're just telling you about the money you can make, the opportunities and all of this stuff. And they're not preparing you. You don't have a realistic expectation of, of what this business really entails. Um, well, what would you add to that, Karen? Yeah, I, I would just say that's absolutely right. Don't quit your day job, right, Frank? <laughs> Don't quit your day job oh, no, because you yet. actually... You better... <laughs> <laughs> your day job pay consistently. Amazon don't. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Amazon is not your day job, but not on the same <laughs> schedule. And, you know, so, Horace, you mentioned, and, and so did you, Frank, this issue of reserve just for anyone who might not quite well, know what I, that I'm gonna give is an, about. I'm going to give a quick Go example. Ahead. Yeah. I got $1,100 in my Amazon account in total. The amount they were trying to let me send to my actual bank account, $12. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh my God. Twelve dollars. I'm like, why? You know how mad you would be if you was like waiting on that money? You know what I'm and, saying? And like if I was like calling myself, I'm gonna flip these and then pay a bill. Yeah, all right. No, you it can doesn't call work Amazon like any day. No. Nah, I'm not, so not glad. Me. I mean, that was that's perfect. That's exactly how it is in the beginning, and it is so it is so discouraging and frustrating. But when you think about it, um, and Horace, you talk about this all the time, that w when you're dealing with Amazon, an Amazon business, it is a business. It's a real business, and it's about cash flow. And it's about cash flow for Amazon. So Amazon's perspective is this. You may have, uh, have sold, how much was it, Frank? Eleven. dollars Hundred dollars, like eleven hundred, about eleven hundred dollars, right? But what percentage of those sales are going to get returned to Amazon? Some percentage is going to be returned. People return things all the time. We do mm -hmm. it. We understand that. And so Amazon is running a business, and their perspective is: listen, we're going to hold your funds for at least seven days. Uh, after delivery of product to try to hedge against the likelihood that uh, uh, your customers are going to make returns. Because when they return, we won't give them your money back. They, they, they don't want to give their money to the customers wow. and then try to come after you. No, they're just going to hold your money until, you know, it looks like everything is clear and then they start releasing little by little. So that's what it's about. And so you really have to have a pretty significant volume pretty regularly before you start seeing the dollars roll in. Real quick, Hustlers, if there's anybody that needs to connect with us, make sure you text the words working class hustler to the number on your screen. This is absolutely free. It's what we do. It's what we're here for. It won't cost you nothing. If there's anything we can do to help, we would be pleased. Another thing, we do have a private group. The link to that will be in the description and all full disclosure, this is a private paid membership, but it's very, very affordable. In fact, for about a dollar a day, you can actually 
meet with us. All three of us and some other hustlers are in the group. You want me to help? You want me to, you want me to help you sell it too? <laughs> Do what now? You want me to help you sell it too? <laughs> Get my sales pitch. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but well, what do you but hey, speaking of that, you know because you won you won ace in the way in the group from paying for the membership. <laughs> one oh, ace in the way. Okay. <laughs> they might I give you the ace something for us, Frank. Come they on might now. give you the ace in on the group call. <laughs> you know? Oh, they oh, might they're, go they're, they're, you know what? Yeah, they're, they're, every they're, week, every Sunday we meet, there has not been one week where we didn't walk away with a real with ace. Yeah. With leads. And with leads for multiple items that you could choose two to of research my main. For. Two of my main sellers are are stuff that was just thrown in the chat on the Sunday. Yes. Two and, of my and, most, and I don't even know if I won't tell them. They ain't in the group. I ain't telling them. But <laughs> okay. I was going to say, got now, Frank, uh, <laughs> yeah, they you know, we don't get the they, gotta, they gotta sign you up. You can't give all the juice for free. Oh, that's no. right. That's right. That's right. It's very, very in this easy. group, we we share <laughs> yeah, freely. Yeah, right. they gotta. Yeah, I gotta see them on Sunday. Uh, from 12 to 1. But yeah, like there was aces that I got out the group. Just absolutely check his every out. week like, we right. do. We so. we we share leagues for items. Mm -hmm. But but Karen, I like the point you brought up though, because when you really compare Amazon to eBay, like you were saying, Amazon is a business and they're gonna protect their cash flow as well. With eBay, you own your own. It's, it's, it's an open market. So if a customer has a problem, hey, eBay really ain't trying to get involved with that. That's between you and the customer. You know, that obviously they can try and escalate things, but essentially you're not representing eBay with, with these transactions. You're you're an independent, <laughs> basically like you you would be akin to an independent contractor. It's your listing. It's what you do. When you're selling on Amazon, that is not your customer. That is not your platform. You do not see any credit card information. Uh, you're not even, you're limited to the type of interaction that you can even have with their customer. So, you know, I didn't even really look at it that way when it comes to, the concerns with concern uh with returns i should say and that is a real thing it happens all the time uh amazon has to position themselves so that they don't have to weather that and and deal with that um frank have you what's been your experience this is a little off topic but we might as well touch mm -hmm. on it right you do a lot of merchant fulfill you don't do fba right no, I do all merchant fulfill right now. And how often are you dealing with complaints? People want to return things. People are claiming damage, loss. Um, I've had like one item that was randomly getting returned, but other than that, I haven't had any returns. Wow. It was just literally one item that I. It was like this, this cooler that was getting returned. I think people was using it like one time and not taking a tag off. And, and <laughs> I don't know. I tell you, man, these these Amazon customers. Whew, yeah. You're lucky number, if they don't number. take the tag off, you know, because sometimes they just use it like. <laughs> yeah, and then the thing with Amazon like they want is like. To, and then turn it back to you. Right, because if you don't get like it, with eBay, right, you get like an option to like, you know what I'm saying? If you're going to return it, but I normally just return everything is all they're going to do is leave you bad feedback anyway. <laughs> Amazon, they just tell you like, oh, if I'm getting returned today, <laughs> you don't get no say so with Amazon. Yeah, right. actually, well, with eBay, you can create your listings and say you don't even accept returns. Now, in reality, if there really is a problem, like you say, you probably right. go ahead if you can determine that, yeah, there's maybe mm -hmm. some kind of legitimate issue. But you can create a listing that says, oh, you don't take returns. 
but not so right. on Amazon. Right. right. Now, you guys know that um, primarily I sell food. That is one category on Amazon where they don't, they will not auto return. Like Frank was mentioning, he just gets that notification. Hey, by the way, Frank, uh, we gave a refund. You got a product coming back. Uh, do what you do. Uh, when when it comes to food, uh, they don't <clears throat> they don't do auto. And trust me, customers don't like it because they've been spoiled, and they've come to expect to just be able to you know return things on any sort of whim. So if, if right. guys, if you if you want to get into to food, uh, we talk all about it. Actually, there's a free webinar. Look in the description that we did. As a matter of fact, Frank, did we meet? Uh, were you on the snack food symposium? The, the the webinar where I was talking about snack foods. Is that how you got in the group or what? I don't know. It was it was something on YouTube, and I got your number, and I text you. Oh, then okay. we talked, and then it just went from there. Okay. But it was mostly from talking to you. It wasn't like on like the, I got your information from YouTube, mm -hmm. but most of us connecting was like on the phone. Okay. Yeah. So again, guys, make sure you do what Frank did. Text that text working class hustler to the number you see on your screen right now, and I will get back to you. I do work. I do have a family, and I do run a business. So it might take me a little bit. Please be patient, but I'm here for you. And it is my absolute pleasure. So we're going to take a break here for me to reveal a few numbers. Because another thing I was saying was, you know, I've always been about realistic expectations. A lot of people get on these channels and they constantly want to talk about numbers and this, that, and the third. And they really not, they're not preparing you for what is, is really out there. Now, you... Guys, collectively, once again, last month between Amazon and Walmart. So on, on Amazon, I did $15,730.80. That's gross revenue. That's not profit. Walmart, $3,078.77 for a grand total of $18,809.57. But the question is, how much money did I spend on inventory that month? So I spent $5,734 in inventory. Now, that does not include other expenses. I have to buy my boxes. I have to pay for shipping. I'm just talking about inventory, okay? Um, <clears throat> I do quite a bit of wholesale Guys, you got to let me know in the comments if you want to know more about, about wholesale. Uh, we can get into that. I'm pretty sure that a lot of people out there do want to learn about it. So I do plan on getting more into that. But I would be uh, much more encouraged if you guys would leave some feedback and let me know, hey, by machine, I want to know more about wholesale. Um, and like I said, it, it, I think it's important for you to realize, okay, if you want to do 18, 19, this is the better part of $20,000 in a month. Be ready to spend roughly six grand just in inventory. Um, <laughs> and right away, I want to see, Frank, how, how would you feel as a newer seller? What, what do you think when I, when I present that to you that way in terms of saying, hey, be ready to spend about six grand you want to do about 20,000 in sales and that ain't your profit. That's just your, your gross. What would you say to that? Sound, sound good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Cause I mean, once you, once you do the, cause you said, what you said, 6,000 in, in revenue, in, in, in inventory. And you yeah. Like in inventory. 20,000 in sales. I yeah. Mean, it sounds like you, and I know you're not spending that much. Like shipping, relatively, can't not. It's gonna be about three to three to ten dollars an item, depending on what you're shipping. Yeah, what I ship, I, I, I ship. It, it's quite money. expensive. 
I, actually, because of the types of products I ship, they, they tend to be bulky, not so heavy. But when it comes mm. to shipping, your dimensions will get you into trouble. So you got to be careful. But I, I yeah. spend a good amount. I mean, I, I'm always honest. I only get to keep maybe 15% of that. So you guys can do the math. Uh, yeah. If I want more money, I got to do a lot more volume. But I also love sharing that with you. I love sharing that with you because you look at these big companies, if you really get into their financials and you figure out how much they're really making, okay, it's not that much. You know what I'm saying? But hey, if you're doing 15%, if you're doing 20% on average, you're beating the stock market. You ain't going to go out there, you know, investing and get them types of returns. So, you know, it's, right. it's all relative. What would you say to that, Karen? I, well, here's the thing. Uh, mathematics is really not my strongest suit, so I'm not going to off the top of my head try to quote any uh, specific figures. However, uh, it's pretty well understood in this industry that you're really making your money when you spend money. So, for instance, if my sales are, are not where I need them to be, then one of the things I'm going to look at is well, wait a minute, what, what did I buy? Because you're really making your money when you purchase. So every time you make your, as you make your purchases, if you spend $6,000, your return on that, let's just say, let's just say it's gonna be 20%. Okay, fellas, help me out. What's 20% of $6,000? Uh, 1200 Okay. That's what you've got. That's what you just essentially made. Now it's going to be deferred because obviously you've got to, you know, list it and and sell it. But if you're consistently spending the money, uh, then the items are consistently selling, and that's where your flow really comes through. If you stop buying, you're dead in the water. You have mm -hmm. to keep buying. You have to, what what's the term, Horace? Feed the Feed beast. The beast. <laughs> you have to keep feeding the beast. It's The beast is insatiable. So you right. have to keep feeding the beast if you want the money to flow. It's not a case where, all right, I've got $500. I'll spend $500 and then I'm going to sit back and wait. As Frank said, what did you say, Frank? If you do that, gonna what's going to happen? Money, yeah. <laughs> You're going to be dead in the water. <laughs> dead in the water. Wondering okay. what happened. Right. I'm glad you said that, though, because that 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 reminds me of an interview that I did with the founder of the Repricer Aura. And if you guys want to check that out, those, those were that was a great series of videos. He literally took my thinking and turned it and he said exactly what you were saying karen he was like you make your money when you buy he went further to say the most important thing the most important job the most important activity that you can do as a business owner in retail is buy that is the most important thing and anything else he don't even want to spend his time on i'm not like that i'm a working class hustler i got my hands in everything i do everything um but he's a seven-figure seller. I'm not. <laughs> so, you know, it would behoove me to adopt and actually start to practice more of his philosophy. I, I haven't done it, but it, it it was it's really good that you brought that up, though, because we don't think a lot of times the name of this 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 channel, you know, working class hustle, a lot of times we're really not hustling. We, we want to be in business. Hustle is just about buy this thing, flip it, I'm done. This is a real business. It, it's going to have recurring expenses. It's going to have management that has to be done. And you have to think and act like a manager. Actually acting like a hustler is going to keep you on a hustler level. If we really want to expand, we're going to have to start thinking like a business and behaving like a manager. So, you know, purchasing. You have these companies, you'll ask somebody, what do they do? Oh, I'm a buyer for so-and-so. I'm a buyer. I'm like, but hustlers are thinking they don't want to spend money. <laughs> they, 
They always, you know what I mean? Yeah. They're not, they don't really want to make an activity of putting money out and keeping money in circulation. When you got a business, that money is constantly moving around and you're just trying to skim a little bit off. The business ends up taking on a life of its own. And if you're not careful, you just kind of watching it, feeding it, and you never really get nothing out of it. So <laughs> as far as taking cash out of it. So, you know, you do have to you do have to watch that. And the reality is one of the beauties of the business, of course, is that it is your business. So you mm. can decide whether you are going to be happy with 15 percent if you need 20 percent, 25 percent, you know, uh, whatever that number is. But with all of it, it takes work, you know wholesale you were talking about Horace people think that's the holy grail and it has some real advantages but the margins are going to be lower on that but your product you can consistently get your your product and you don't have to do the you know go around shopping the clearance racks at stores so you know, it's kind of a trade-off. So it might be lower margins, but they're more consistent and there may be more uh, volume in terms of sales because you're not talking about selling one-offs. You're really talking about items that are replenishable. Very good point. I wasn't going to get into it, but, you know, we talked about um, I spent, basically, I spent, Five thousand four hundred thirty-seven dollars and ninety-three cents. That's writing checks to wholesalers. Okay, only two hundred ninety-three, uh, two hundred ninety-six dollars and thirty-nine cents. So basically, three hundred was spent in retail stores during retail arbitrage last month. So think about that, guys. Mm. Um, I didn't spend a lot of time on the shelves. I I need to because imagine if I had spent. Let's say I had spent five thousand, you know, writing checks out for wholesalers. Another five thousand, because I used to spend six. I got videos out there. I've spent seven, eight thousand dollars in retail arbitrage and online yeah. arbitrage. Imagine if I was doing that. See that? Yeah, I think I spend more money than you on retail. <laughs> on, on your retail arbitrage. Oh, yeah, you yeah. Probably, like, yeah, you do. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yes. Like, not even being funny. Like, yeah. So yeah, I'm going to got it all now. <laughs> they're going to give it to you. They're going to give it to you, but you better keep it going. You better keep it going. <laughs> or else, or else you'll have a, a big payday and you'll feel great, but it'll deplete everything. Mm. And then you won't have anything behind it. And then the right. next payday is like $12. That can happen too. Yeah. So. yeah. Right. All right, hustlers. Well, I hope you guys got a lot out of, uh, out of our discussion. And remember, the main thing that we were trying to hammer home is realistic expectations for you. If you want to get your numbers up, whether you're already doing this business which is gonna be a lot of people. A lot of people have stuck their toes in, they dabbled, things didn't look quite right, they pulled out. Some of you guys are watching, you're not active, but you still have an active account. Come back in, we're here to encourage you. You can do it. Uh, you're looking at three people, the three of us are at different stages, but we're all in this and we're all making it happen. But leave us some feedback, let us know what we what what would you guys like to discuss what is there to talk about that you need help with maybe you don't want to to text the words working class hustler to the number on your screen maybe you just want to add something in the chat maybe we can answer your question drop a question and the three of us will address that that's what we would love to do so please don't hesitate in fact we're charging you with that we want to know hey we're considering possibly going live. I prefer to do that, but out of respect for you, we don't have an actual set schedule. But if it's something that you would like, maybe you would have liked to have been able to comment and interact with us right now. 
we didn't make that available. But if you show some interest, if you take the time to actually give us some feedback, that could be something that we look into in the future. I kind of like this. So, you know, just let us know. And on that note, guys, we're going to end it. Working class hustlers, wave goodbye. Oh, and don't forget, one more time, make sure you check out Frank's channel, NBA Cooler Talk. And uh, that way you can stay up on your, on your, on your, ba on your basketball game and all that stuff. Yeah, so. like and subscribe. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yep, yeah, do that for us right here as well as Frank's channel. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share. All right, guys, we're out till next time.